I hope you enjoyed today's playlist. I think the zombie outdid himself, found some pretty funny little gems, as well as some informative pieces with all the latest news, some technical analysis, and an interesting look at what it's like to actually cut weight for an MMA fight. It looks pretty fucking tough, I gotta tell you. Speaking of tough, this is going to be tough because I have to issue a retraction. In yesterday's rant of the day, I egregiously, stupidly, and incorrectly said that uh, UFC light heavyweight challenger, title challenger, Vitor Belfort, was coming into his 152, UFC 152 title fight against John Jones off of a loss. That's incorrect. Somehow I forgot the two wins he's notched up since losing to Anderson Silva at UFC 126. Vitor is coming in off wins over Yoshihiro Akiyama and Anthony Johnson. So he's coming in with a two-fight win streak outside the division nonetheless, but he's a high-profile name and he's got a puncher's chance. I think anybody can recognize that if Vitor can get inside John Jones's reach and start applying those chain punches of straight right and lefts that he's famous for that uh, Jones could be in trouble obviously the odds against that are fairly high nonetheless Vitor has the classic puncher's chance and I look forward to seeing how he does at UFC 152 on September 22nd for today's rant of the day I want to turn to a serious topic and it's a difficult one I'm not trying to make light of any tragic situations. I'm just trying to speculate on what might happen if things go terribly wrong for the UFC. It's a worst case scenario, the kind of gloomy thing I like to roll around in. If you don't know, last night on WWE Raw, announcer and wrestler Jerry Lawler suffered a heart attack shortly after engaging in a tag team match and returning to the booth where he was going to be announcing the rest of the show. Unfortunately, Mr. Lawler collapsed apparently with a heart attack. He's since been hospitalized and had surgery, and we wish him all the best for a speedy recovery. And as a big Jerry Lawler fan, going back to the days when he worked with Andy Kaufman on places like the David Letterman Show and the classic I'm Not From Hollywood documentary, mad respect to Jerry Lawler and hope him a speedy recovery. He's a legend not just to WWE fans, but fans of comedy and uh, performing arts all the world around. Nonetheless, this occasion of a near tragedy on live TV made me think what would happen if someone died live on a UFC broadcast. I'm just going to run through a couple of morbid scenarios. I'm not going to try to get too disgusting with it, but I think there's three categories. You could have someone in the announcer or supporting cast, um, Dana White, Lorenzo Fertito, one of the referees, the cut man, and I certainly do not wish this on anyone. Godspeed to everybody involved in the UFC. I'm a huge fan and hope them the best. Live long and prosper, everybody. I'm just saying, what if this were to happen? Obviously, if Rogan or Goldberg, one of the announcers, were to go down, uh, suddenly stricken with illness, there's, you know, or Dana White or the Fertitas, there's really, that would have a limited impact on the UFC. That, that's the sort of thing that could happen anytime, anywhere. It could happen on a CNN live broadcast with newscasters. It could happen on Fox. It could happen anywhere. Anytime you've got the uh, cameras pointed at a live, in a live television situation, things can happen. I remember seeing video on YouTube of a uh, news announcer having a stroke live on air, which was certainly an uncomfortable uh, and unpleasant situation. So in that situation, I think there would be the immediate discomfort of what to do uh, in the situation, and obviously that would depend if it's an announcer or someone more peripheral to the broadcast. Nevertheless, they would uh, presumably the show would go on. I think that's the right thing to do, especially in a crowded arena of bloodthirsty fans. It's, it's the right thing to let the show finish, let everybody see what they paid for, uh, get the uh, injured or ill person uh, to a hospital as fast as possible. Unfortunately, there's ample medical care alongside the Octagon at all times, thanks to our state athletic commissions who oversee that sort of thing and the UFC's numerous safety precautions. Things take a dramatically different turn should a fighter die in the Octagon on live TV. Or even if a fighter dies shortly after the broadcast, I think that would be nearly as bad publicity-wise. And from there, you know, that's two categories. You've got live on the air death, uh, which I think could possibly get the UFC kicked off broadcast television forever. We've had live on the air paralysis in NFL football. I can't recall a death. I know that we have deaths every year in American high school football, uh, occasionally college football. I can remember a few paralysis in the NFL, but I cannot remember a death. And for an established sport like the NFL, that's America's most popular sport, has a history going back to the 1800s, uh, has been a popular professional sport since the 1930s. I think that, um, you know, for the NFL, it's one thing. People understand it's a dangerous sport. With the UFC, even though we've got a 20-year history behind us, I think fans, uh, non-fans, would still be very appalled and alarmed. Uh, and it would be the chance they've been waiting for. Remember, this is a sport that's still not licensed in America's 
second biggest state, New York, or third biggest state, biggest media market by far. So we've got a lot of skeptical legislators still to overcome, and I think a death in the ring, in the cage, would um, probably preclude uh, regulation of MMA in New York for some time if it happens before that. Otherwise, if it happened on Fox, particularly if it was gory circumstances, if there was foul play involved, somebody cheated, padded gloves, strike after the referee stopped the fight, something like that uh, would be very bad. I think I think in that instance, if, if you could blame the f malfeasance on the fighter, then strictly the fighter and his camp uh, would bear the brunt of it, and I think the UFC could recover. However, if it's just a fluke accident, something that's legal within the rules, somebody gets uh, a brain injury and dies, there's no telling. All bets are off. So... In short, I think I think all we can do is pray this doesn't happen, continue to vigilantly monitor the athletic commissions and, and encourage them to do their best monitoring the fighters' health and safety. And I gotta say, especially if you're following what's going on in California, that is not the case. California long regarded as one of the U.S.'s better athletic commissions, their athletic commission is completely collapsing to the extent where they're barely drug testing fighters in the events they hold. They're not keeping fighters' medical uh, records on file, so fighters have to submit them over and over again. They're not keeping drug tests on file. A lot of shady shenanigans going on there. I think Zach Arnold at Fight Opinion has the best coverage of what's going on, although we're trying to keep up with it at Bloody Elbow. So, if that's one of the best athletic commissions in the U.S., What's that say about places like Texas, Virginia, Missouri, where basically anything goes and the commissions do very little of anything to look out for the safety of the fighters? I think that's why we've got to be glad that the UFC is an extremely professional and reputable organization that does care about the safety of its fighters. And we can only hope that competitors such as Bellator and the new World Series of MMA uh, work to live up to the standards that Zufa has set. So we'll see. Godspeed. I'm going to knock on wood here. Hope that nobody does die in the octagon anytime soon. However, I just think the odds are it's going to happen in our lifetimes. If the UFC continues to, to compete, it's such a dangerous sport that I think the odds are we've already had two, no, we've had three deaths in regulated MMA competition in the USA in the last five years. And I think it's just a matter of time before death comes to the octagon. So here's hoping it takes us time. And uh, that when it does, if it does happen, that everybody involved handles it responsibly and, and that the commissions do their job to protect the safety of the fighters. I'd hate to see somebody die under any circumstances, but especially if it's something that would be avoidable and could have been prevented by better regulation on the part of the athletic commissions. We'll be back tomorrow and hopefully have more uh, light fare to talk about. And uh, enjoy uh, your day, and we'll be back tomorrow with more MMA of the Day.